Welcome, everybody. In this episode of Learning to AppleScript, I'm going to be focusing on data types. I won't talk about every single data type that is available in AppleScript, but I will touch on the five most common ones that we run into. Um, and I'll give you some examples of each. So first we'll talk about numbers, then we'll talk about strings, then we'll talk about dates, uh, we'll talk about lists, and lastly I'll talk about records. So first we're going to focus on the number data type. This can be an integer, a gallon, an inch, any sort of number. Um, here we'll just start with a basic number with a decimal and we'll talk a little bit about how to write a number and what the difference between a number and a string is. So here you can see I said set x to 23.25 and then return x. And in our result window we see result 20, uh, 23.25. Notice that I did not surround the 23.25 with quotes. That's because I want AppleScript to understand that this is a number. If I were to put this in quotes, that would mean it would think of this as a string and not a number. So now I'll show you with the string variable, I'll say set x to 23.25, and but notice this time I'm putting it in quotes. So now AppleScript will return that result as quote 23.25. So the difference is when it's a string, it thinks of it as text. When it's without the quotes around it, it thinks of it as a number. So here you can see if I put as number after my, my quoted version of 23.25 and I run it, I get the result 23.25, but without the quotes now. So I've coerced my string back into a number by saying as number afterwards. This is important to understand because if you're trying to do math or any other uh, you know, manipulation with your variables, you'll want to make sure that you know what the data type is or at least coerce it to the data type that you're expecting. Okay, so let's move on to the date data type. So here I'll say set x to, and I'm going to add the keyword date in front of a string, 12, 23, 21. And what this will do is this will tell AppleScript that my string is actually a date. And you can see as soon as I compile it, it converts my string back to what looks more like a long form date string. So AppleScript automatically understands because of this date keyword that this is a date that I'm talking about. So as another example, I'll just do set Y to date. And then when I compile this, you can see again, it transforms that date string that I had done short form date string into a long form date. Later in this video, I'll get into more detail about how to manipulate dates and some different things you can use with the date data type. Okay, so let's look a little bit more at the list data type. So here I'll start with set x2, and then you'll notice I'm gonna put a left curly bracket, and then I can put a string followed by a comma. So here I'll do item A, comma, and then another string, item B, comma, and then a third string, item C, comma, and then the right curly bracket. So this is now a list. I happen to use three string items, but this could have been a combination of um, other lists, strings, numbers, dates, whatever you want within your list. All right, so finally, let's look at an example of a record. A record is a lot like a list, but it's made up of a key value pair combination. So here I'll say set x2, and then again, I'll start with the left curly bracket, and then we'll give a our first item a name or a key, so I'll just call that key item A, followed by a colon, and then the value for item A. In this case, I'll do demo one. Then again, I'll follow it by a comma, another key or name, so in this case, I'll do item B, followed by a colon, and then again, I can change the data type and I'll put in a number for this one, 22.2. And then I'll close the whole record with a right curly bracket. All right, so let's dig into each of these data types in a little bit more detail. Let me open up a new script. Uh, I'll move it over to the side here so we can reference our previous version with all of our different data types. And I'll just go through each of them one at a time and dig into them with a little bit more detail. All right, so let's dig into the number data type a little bit more. So I'll say set var 1 to 22.5, and then I'll say set var 2 to 2. So this will let us perform some different math functions and see how to work with the numbers. So I'll say set the result to var1 plus var2. And then when I, uh, then I'll return the, the variable, the result, and we'll be able to see that result down in our result pane at the bottom. 
And just to kind of go through some different examples, I'll go ahead and change the plus to minus so you can see I can do subtraction. I'll change the minus to a star so you can see that we can do some multiplication. I'll also change it to a forward slash, which allows us to do division. And then lastly, I'll add mod, which uh, will return the remainder of var1 divided by var2. So there are some examples of the math you can do with the number data type. Keep in mind that these were numbers and not strings, and that's why we were able to do addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division with them. So let's look a little bit more at the string data type and how we can work with that. So I'll say set var1 to hello, and then I'll say set var2 to world. And then I will add a third variable, set the result to var1 ampersand space var2 ampersand, and we'll add an exclamation point at the end. And then when I return this result, we'll see hello world exclamation point. So there's one way you can interact and manipulate your strings. In this case, we concatenated or joined two different variables to create a final sentence. OK, let's switch gears and talk a little bit more about dates. So I'll say set var1 to date, just like before, and I'll give it a date as a string 12, 22, 21. And I'll do another example, set var2 to date 12, 24, slash 21. And again, when I compile this, Apple Script will change those into full string dates. Now let's say set the result to var1 plus two times days. So this is going to automatically add two days to my variable var1. So in this case, we can see it automatically changed it to December 24th. If I change it to subtract, it'll be December 20th, uh, excuse me, December 20th. We can also do this with hours. I can say plus 14 times hours. Just to give an example here, let's change this from 12 a.m. Let's change that to 5 a.m. to make it a little bit different. So I can run this and you'll see now I get 5 a.m. But if I change that back again and say plus 14 hours, we get 7 p.m. AppleScript also has several different methods for getting portions of a date. So I can say month of or year of or day of to get the different parts of this specific date. OK, so so far we've covered numbers, strings, and dates. So let's look a little bit more at the list data type. So I'll say set var1 to left curly bracket. And then I'll add an item, item A. And then I'll add a number this time, and we'll do 23.9. And I'll add another string, item C. And then I have to close this with my right curly bracket. I've now just defined a list. And so let's say set the result to item 2 of my list var 1. And in this case, I will get 23.9 as a result. I can change this to item 1 to get item A. Or I can change it to item 3 to get item C. And just like earlier, if I want to get item 2, but I want it to be a string, I can coerce it to a string by saying as string, even though it was originally stored as a number in my list. So as we define our variable as a list, we can store many different items in our variable and access them individually at any point. Now let's dig a little bit deeper into the record data type, which looks a lot like the list data type, but does function a little bit differently. And it's important to understand that difference. So here I'll say set var1 to, and again, left curly bracket, and I'll say first name as my key, and then I'll, I'll do a colon followed by a string, John, as my first name, and then comma, last name, colon, Voigt as the last name. And then again, I'll close this with the right curly bracket. So here you can see I've now got two key value pairs, first name and last name, and then their values, John, Voigt. So if I say set the result to first name of var1 and space ampersand last name of var1, and then I return that result, now I will get John Voigt as a string. So you may have noticed when I was creating the keys for my record, I used first name and last name uh, as one word. Um, I did that for a reason. So let's just show you what would happen if I did just first and last, not first name, last name. If I go ahead and try to compile this, I get an error message. And I get that error message because the word first and last are 
protected words within Apple Script. They mean something. So I can get past this error if I use the pipe around first and the pipe around last. This allows you to communicate to the script editor that you're trying to use them as keys or variables, not as the protected word that they would normally mean within Apple Script. But in order to, to then use them later on, I have to also put the pipes in front and after them in um, the call when I'm trying to pull the data out of my record. So here, I've put them in around first and last in the second statement, and now you can see everything works fine as expected. One other thing I hope you noticed uh, as I was working with the record, I wasn't accessing the parts of the record by saying item one of var one or item two of var one. And that's because you can't access record items as their position in the list because it's not a list, it's a record. So the only way to get the data from a record is to access it by the key of that record. So that's why I said set the result to first name of var1 and so on. As always, thanks so much for spending your time with me. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've liked it, please click the thumbs up button. If not, go ahead and hit the thumbs down button. Either way, I appreciate you watching my video. If you haven't already, please subscribe and I hope to see you in my next video.